Hello, this is Betamax80 once again with some slightly faster items to show you this evening. Um, rather more of a showcasing, I suppose, than anything else. Not normally my, my type of content, but um, these both arrived today. They're the second time I've used both of them, so they're both um, they're both something I can vouch for the, the quality and performance of. Um, first of all, my second GoTech floppy drive emulator came today. A lot of people who watch this channel and are in the retro machine community already use these so they're going to know what they are but if you haven't used one before and you're just curious as to uh, to what's involved with them um, I thought I'd show you. So they just come in a generic envelope in this piece of foam wrapping. Um, it's a fairly cheaply made device I have to admit that it's not built to a particularly high standard of quality. This one in particular feels even more flimsy than the last, which is which is quite incredible. It feels like it hasn't been put together quite right. But um, this is how they are. The, this is how the GoTech floppy drive emulator always is. Um, so just to walk you around it a bit, this camera's not showing it too well because it's all black. But there we go. Um, Phil's Computer Lab has some good videos on these, but um, I'll walk you through it anyway on my channel here. So this has a, a USB drive. I would recommend you get a good USB thumb drive for this. I've actually um, looked for one of these in particular because I know that they're recognised by everything. They boot from um, they're bootable from the the BIOS natively anyway. They also have an LED indicator light on them, so you actually have an activity light. Very useful because the light on this kind of shows you general accessing of the drive, but it doesn't show you what data is transferring. So you can actually see if data is transferring with one of these. Um, this is a, 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 a sorry, a Toshiba Trans Memory Stick. I really recommend these. Um, very good match with this drive. They don't make them in very high capacity. This is a 16 gigabyte one but considering um, that these drives with the software I found for them anyway only work with a hundred discs so it's basically one gig anyway it can be as small as you like this just happened to be the cheapest transmedia I could buy maybe 16 gig but it might as well be an 8 or a 2 whatever you can find the cheapest basically but get a good drive one that you have used before that you know will be reliable I think that's my um my guide for this and one with a, a cover for the end would be useful as well because I, I seem to find that I'm taking this out, putting it in, taking it out because the kind of systems that need these also have the kind of BIOSes that don't like having a floppy disk in the drive if they're not booting from them so <laughs> this comes in and out as well. Um, so the back of the device, um, the reason why we always bang on about the fact that there's no floppy disk drive type connector on the board is that these actually interface with the traditional um, MFM floppy disk drive connector so the uh, yes the power is a, a floppy disk drive type 4 pin connector you can actually get an adapter from a Molex for these but this this data connection is actually a floppy drive data connection you don't get a cable with this but hopefully with most, most most motherboards you actually get a floppy disk drive type cable. So this goes straight onto the floppy disk drive connector and as far as your computer is concerned you have a floppy drive. This is floppy drive A. Any time that the USB stick is connected into this it's operating as one floppy disk. The only thing that knows that there is a more than one disk on the actual thumb drive is, is this display and these buttons. So um, the way it's normally set up is that you have um, your tens and then your units with these two buttons. You see you have two. So it's, it goes up 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then you go to the other button to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it goes from 0, 0 to 99. So you have 100 by default. I, I believe Phil's Computer Lab showed the way that you can format this to full 1000 disk capacity but I haven't reached that kind of need yet. I've got maybe 30 images on this. It's very handy but 
yeah probably probably 50 images is realistically all, all you probably need unless you actually have loads of these systems and you need specific boot disks that's possible um so it's a very simple device otherwise this this display looks really cool by the way it's a green led very funky looking on your computer it's like you've got a turbo button all over again but this really displays what floppy disk drive number your computer thinks is in the drive so this this is um putting a floppy disk in the drive and then this is selecting which floppy disk image your s is using so when you write one of these you don't what I couldn't be sure about before I bought my first one is you don't actually need one of these to write the disk images. You just insert the memory stick into your normal USB drive, so your, your normal USB connection on your more modern computer, I suppose. Um, and then you use a special piece of software. Um, Phil's Computer Lab details this more, but look for um, IPCAS. Th this CD, by the way, this this that you get with it, the, the it's absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. You may as well toss this over your shoulder. Nothing of use on this, trust me. Um, but look for IPCAS. They make a lot of drives that look very similar to this, but aren't quite the uh, the GoTech drive. And trust me, they're a lot more expensive actually. But their software is one hundred percent compatible with the images that uh, that, that it makes. Um, it's one hundred percent compatible with this drive, so that's that's quite cool. Th these are under fifteen pounds imported. I generally find I'm always able to get these for under fifteen pounds. This one's about fourteen, I think. Both of mine about these 14 pound mark i actually thought i was ordering a beige one and a black one came anyway this is it, it's that kind of thing you you're buying it from china the description's a little bit strange it says it's for sewing machines and things and you don't quite know what you're going to get it seems that these are always in black now it seems to be this this model's variation i don't really know another thing to note there are jumpers on here. I believe that on this CD there's some kind of description as to what you do with these jumpers. But the uh, the main um, be all and end all of it is that if you're using it to connect it to a PC, your PC can support a 1.44 megabyte drive. Leave this as it is. If you need to change it for a 720k drive, I think you may need to... Uh, to put a jumper on here or, or change the existing jumper's position possibly there, there are actually jumpers included in here but if you've got a normal high density capable BIOS exactly as it comes from the factory is exactly what you need so you should be fine um, so yes you're writing with the software it writes all the images um, another thing that isn't really mentioned very easily is that you will need to get some sort of disk imaging software. The disk images are the sort of things that you download from the internet. They normally end in a .img or similar format, but you really need a piece of software um, known as WinImage. Um, it's shareware, so you should be registering that after, I think it's 30 days. Um, but that's really the, the go-to software for, for disk emulation images on this. You can actually um, use the native Windows tools as well. It's a little bit hard to explain, but you can actually get Windows to write to, to one of these disk images. If you select it first, basically, you can get Windows to write this as a bootable disk image, and then you can add your files to it afterwards, just like a normal floppy disk. But just be careful to use the software to select the proper image before you overwrite something else. Software is a bit picky. You sometimes need to open a disk image file, then close it again after. You have to save it after you've written to it. Bit strange. You do get used to it. Give it a few goes. Give it a little bit of a um, expect a bit of a learning curve with it. Basically, install the hardware first. Give the software. Give, give writing this properly a bit of a learning curve, and you'll be fine only takes maybe half an hour to get used to but you might make a couple of mistakes along the way um so that's this this is the gotek you see it's actually written there they're, they're called all kinds of names on the ebay site but they always end up being gotek floppy drives always end up being the same thing a gotek floppy drive emulator 
I actually put um, a little label in the in some of the spare black space on here. I actually put FDD just to remind myself that it's not a regular USB slot. Cause it, it cannot operate as a normal USB slot. It operates only as a floppy disk drive because of the connectors on the back. So um, I actually do write on there just to remind myself so that I'm not wondering all the time. This is just me wondering all the time why um, I can't read from it like a normal USB drive. It comes with these as well. It's the only other thing it comes with. No written manual. There's a manual on the CD. You don't really need it. But it does have some mounting screws. I do recommend you use these mounting screws because the, um, the plastic's quite brittle on this. So I recommend that you use theirs that are the right, uh, right diameter rather than trying to um, force some larger ones in and breaking the drive. So the mounting screws, yes, I recommend you use the ones that they give you. Okay, so that's the GoTech floppy disk drive. Um, Phil's Computer Lab's got a really good video on this and it really explains the alternative software that you can use very well as well. The other thing I wanted to showcase today is the second one of these that I've bought. This is a Safecom um, SWLPR5410. Model number is important. Um, this is a Rarlink. You may not have heard of Rarlink. It's actually the old MediaTek brand. They're the old chip manufacturer that have now become uh, MediaTek. Or they were bought out by MediaTek, I think, more, more precisely. Um, what's great about this card, it's a PCI card, by the way, but it's so compatible. It's a wireless card. Wireless G, it, I believe it would be classified as um, wireless G Nemo. So it, it has the various um, technologies in there to make the most out of a 54G connection. But it is only a 54G card. The reason I'm highlighting it is because it really is Windows 98 compatible. I'm telling you this from first-hand experience. It really is, which I think is very unusual for a wireless card of any sort. And it's very straightforward, and it always just works. Every time I reinstall Windows, I put the driver in, and um, it always works first time. The uh, software that's included is basic, but is very reliable as well. It does exactly what you need it to. Lists the available networks and lets you connect to them. Really good. I'll show you what's inside the box. It's very basic. I might add as well that this also, um, the second one for the same price, costs under £9 in the UK from an eBay seller. These are also brand new, um, brand new unused items for this price, £9. It's PCI, as I said earlier. It's very, very, very low profile as well, so it won't interfere with any cables you've got running to sound cards, for example, if you have anything that's running over the top of the of the card. This won't be uh, any kind of problem. I'll just show you what comes in the box. First of all, you have the card itself. I'll unpack this in a second and I'll show you the size of it. Comes with a wireless antenna, a single detachable antenna, reasonable. Certainly seems uh, effective as it needs to be. This CD, as with all of these things, I really don't recommend the drivers included on this CD. It does have drivers for, um, I think it claims everything, but. I've actually um, downloaded much later drivers from the Realtek website, sorry, from the Rarlink website, and they seem an awful lot more reliable. The ones on the CD seem to be quite early drivers, and they don't seem to be all that stable. Um, I'm glad that I did my research and found the later drivers because it's an absolutely flawless card using uh, the later drivers. The only quirk about the Windows ones at least is that you do actually need to run the installer. You can't just use Device Manager to install the card. Um, partly because they're an annoying executable that you can't unzip, but partly because um, in Windows 98, Windows 2000, Windows Millennium Edition especially, there is no wireless connection wizard. So you need the software that's on the, uh, that's contained in the executable file. So there's no harm really in, in using that. So now this is the card. I'm assuming it's a very late revision because it's absolutely tiny. I don't think you could make a card like this any smaller. So it has a full profile bracket, but the card itself is extremely low profile. 
I assume that these are new old stock because I don't think Wiley could be made, making chips for a long time, but I believe it's the last generation of this uh, 54G chip. It's a RT61. I'm very impressed by the performance of this card. Um, it does just work, and it does seem to just work with anything. It's even got drivers from Mac OS, believe it or not, Mac OS X. Um, and it certainly works in Linux, Linux, sorry, um, anything from around 2007 onwards, I would say. Um, because there was an open source driver effort, and it all seems to have sort of started in 2006. So I think that means it's quite a late card, but it's also incredibly compatible. So, um, yeah, I highly recommend the um, this, this card. I'll just show you the box again, so you know what to be looking for. I found it much more useful than any real tech card, and it's one of the very, very few, if not just about the only one, that natively works in Windows 98 for me. So it's the Safecom SWLPR5410. Um, I will find the seller's site again because it seems he's got a fair few of these. And um, I highly recommend it alongside the GoTech Drive. One of these things that you don't necessarily use the way it arrives, but once you get it right, it's really, really good. Okay, I hope this is useful. Um, see you again soon. Bye.